everybody. Welcome to my living room for a 75 minute yin practice. I'll give you a couple moments to get set up. If you have any kind of cushions you can use or blocks, that would be really helpful. You don't necessarily need them for the practice, but they do help you to settle into some of the poses, maybe with a little bit more comfort. Last night I taught a half a class and I intended it to be 75 minutes and I don't know where my head went, but I looked at the time and said, oh my gosh, I have to wrap this up. And I had the time wrong, so it was only an hour long class. So I guarantee you tonight you will get the full 75 minutes. <laughs> it's such a beautiful evening tonight. So thank you so much for sharing your time with me. And if you're tuning in later, thank you for sharing the energy in these uh, classes. It really means a lot to me to be able to teach uh, even though the studios have uh, closed down, I still love sharing this practice and I'm so glad you're sharing it with me. I'll keep doing it as long as needed. And just a reminder that a Sunday night will also be a yin class, so hopefully uh, maybe you're having your Easter celebration if you have one on Monday or earlier on Sunday. It will be 7.15 p.m. on Sunday night. And tomorrow morning, you can earn all of that chocolate that the Easter Bunny might bring by coming to 915 90 Minute Power. So I hope that you join for that. You can always watch the videos later too on Facebook and ask me for links if you need. I have these beautiful cards called Living Peace. Just found them today when I was tidying something up. So I thought I would pick one and we can use that as a little bit of a launching place for the practice today. They just have beautiful, beautiful, um, words that can be intentions for your practice. And tonight the card is acceptance. So acceptance can be our, can be our intention, one of the intentions for the practice this evening. It says here, true acceptance is not a passive agreement with how things were or are. It is the unwavering knowingness that although everything is exactly as it is right now, you are choosing to be okay with it. And isn't that a powerful statement for the times that we're in right now? Everything is exactly as it is right now, and the choice is ours to decide whether or not we're okay with it. it it's truly our reaction to things that makes a difference between being in a place of balance, in a place of peace, or being in a place of stress and reactivity. So I hope that tonight through this practice you can help yourself uh, find acceptance in, with what is true, true unwavering knowingness that this is how it is and that you accept the situation or not with your full heart. And our practice tonight will be one of, of bringing in balance for the whole endocrine system for all of the chocolates. So we'll work through each of them systematically. So let's start in a seat. So feel free to sit up onto a block. I'm just gonna check the camera and make sure it's all good. I can't see who's watching while I'm actually teaching, so I'm gonna take a quick look and make sure people are, are there and that it's still going. Looks pretty good. Right, it's a nice tall seat to begin. And we'll focus uh, our gaze inwards. You can close your eyes or soften your gaze down. Palms can be on your thighs if you feel you need a bit more grounding energy or face up if you have energy to share or receive. Or maybe hands to your heart center, Anjali Mudra, so leaving your own beautiful inner light. And start to focus on your breath. The hope in this practice is, is to create an equanimous breath, so the similar amount of time for your smooth inhalation and smooth exhalation. And I find myself these days needing to sit up a little taller, almost push my heart open because there's a, a lot of heaving in and holding in. So see if you can be a little brighter in the heart, whichever position you're sitting in. Together we'll take three breaths, deep, as deep as you can for the beginning of the practice. Feel free to sigh out your mouth. Inhale. Exhale, feel the shoulders softening. Inhale, spine lengthens. Exhale, shoulders soften. One more, maybe a little deeper. Inhale. 
and exhale. We'll take three Brahmari breaths, the humming sound with the lips closed. And this breath is, I always like to think of it like a whiteboard eraser. So all of the things that are happening in the mind and this breath comes and just clears it all away. And it's also a strong signal to your parasympathetic, parasympathetic nervous system to kick in to help you relax. So this is about making that choice of acceptance in this moment, the choice to relax through this breath. So three of them in a row. You can close your eyes if you like. Hands can be maybe somewhere in your body where you're feeling a little bit extra tension. So it could be maybe to your lower back, on your belly, maybe to the heart, the throat. You decide. Inhale for both. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's the word acceptance. And in yoga, we have the word santosha, which means contentment. It's really about acceptance of how you are and where you are and all that you are in any given moment. Maybe you find another word or phrase for yourself. And as well, set a collective intention, something for the greater good. And finally, a dedication. I know just a few moments ago, people were dedicating a lot of energy and noise to all of the heroes in our communities, especially the medical profession and anyone that's out there working right now. So feel free to dedicate the class in that way or any way that, that suits you. And I'd like to ask you a special favor. I know one of my friends tonight, her mom is very far away and is quite ill and I promised her that I would send a healing energy tonight. So Stella, I'm dedicating some beautiful energy from this practice to you and to your mom and your family. But also at the same time this afternoon, I found out that my own father is in the hospital in Calgary with pneumonia. And so that's really scary to hear right now. So please send him some healing energy, send me some healing energy and we'll put it out there. So maybe to all the people that are facing illness right now and can't be with their families, very difficult time. So healing is practice so we can really share it out in the world. Together we'll open with one beautiful home. Feel free to bring hands together or wherever they are in your body. Inhale through your nose. Big sigh out your mouth. Inhale for home. Oh. Slowly start to bow your mind into the beautiful light of your own heart. Open your eyes if your eyes are closed. Hold them open a few times and bring your gaze back to the center. Find an inner and outer smile. And know that you've landed here accepting all of this chance to relax that you've given yourself. We come off of your seat and we'll make our way down into our back for our first posture tonight, which will be a supine butterfly. So a supine butterfly, you can use your blocks if you like, underneath the outer thighs. If you don't have blocks, don't worry. I just want to turn myself a little bit so you can see me. <laughs> Sliding this gigantic cushion that I have here. Soles of the feet together, knees out wide, lie down onto your back. Blocks can be under your outer thigh, hands can be on your belly, you can make a cactus shape with your arms, or even keep your arms over top of your head, interlace across your opposite elbows with your palms. So something that works for you and is sustainable. This is a little bit of a longer hold. So I'd like you to really give yourself the 
sustainability for this posture. So whichever variation that you've taken of the arms, whether or not you're using blocks. And we're starting with our root chakra, Muladhara chakra. This is right at the base of the spine, the tailbone, and this helps us get connected to the earth, the element of earth. Allow yourself to feel grounded and connected down through your roots. And this helps to balance our adrenal glands, which directly affect our stress response. So the release of adrenaline and cortisol come from the adrenal glands. So anytime you react to stress, you feel that surge of energy that comes from adrenaline, but we also have this surge of cortisol, which accumulates, doesn't really go away, and over time can create a lot of fatigue and illness in the body. So we want as much as we can to regulate. So for the next few minutes, settle down into this pose and feel the softness of your hips, feel the softness of your tailbone, let your spine relax and breathe and breathe. Your body is so smart. When you take a deep conscious breath in and a deep conscious breath out, it immediately starts to relax. Your parasympathetic system kicks in right away. So you can override this stress response, which is strong and primal. It's a primal response to react quickly to stress. So if you can override it with one deep breath and continuously overriding it with more deep breaths will slow down your immediate stress response. In fact, your response to situations can be calm rather than reactive because you've trained your body to breathe. So stay here and breathe. Asana in the yin practice, the butterfly pose. You set intention. Keep coming back to them with your breath as you inhale. Bring some light into your intentions. Breathe them into your body. Personal and collective intentions, maybe even your dedication. And as you exhale, let them soften and take root. six to eight more deep breaths here. Feel free to use that sigh. The sigh out the mouth is a conscious effort and that especially creates that signal for this parasympathetic system. It helps you to press that override to stress button. And you go down the path of relaxation rather than the path of stress and response and reactivity. Last few breaths, inhaling deeply through your nose. Feel free to sigh. Ah, be the loudest one in your house. You might be alone, so who cares how much noise you make to let go? Really, the, this is the art of letting go. Just a little practice. Two more breaths here. Inhale. And exhale. Last one. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. 
slowly bring your hands to your outer thighs and close your knees back together to touch. Take a moment here. And you have choices. You can roll to your left side and push yourself up to your seat. Or if you think it would, it would feel good to roll forward and back a few times, you can roll forward and back and come back up to your seat. Just take a few moments in a seat and cross your legs. See how it feels now seated versus the first few minutes of the class. And finding these moments of stillness in between the postures to recalibrate. You lean back into your hands, keep your feet wide, knees wide, windshield wiper your knees side to side, maybe about four times, four or five times to each side. Bringing yourself back to center, we'll come into deer pose. So your left knee will come forward to the middle of your mat, your right knee behind your left foot. I'm going to sit up nice and tall. And you're welcome to stay here. There's some different options here. One is to turn in the direction of your knees and fold forward, and that's really nice. And you're welcome to use a bolster here. Put my ginormous cushion. You can lay over your bolster and turn your head to one side. You can decide which side feels better for you. And something I really like to do in this posture is to take my bolster more on the outside of my left thigh, so the thigh that's forward, and then twist a little bit to the left. And then you can turn your gaze to the right, which is a little gentler for the neck, or to the left for a little bit deeper twist. So set yourself up wherever you feel comfortable. And this is activating Spadi Spana, the sacral chakra, so opening up in the pelvic region and the hips. And this is about our feelings of creativity, which are in many ways compromised right now, being in such limited situations that many of us are in. So allow your creative energy to be opened up here and to flow. It's also responsible for our sexual energy, our relationships, our connections to one another. Also very limited during this time. So feelings might come up, let them come up and let them go with your breath. If you want to go deeper in this pose, you'd like to move into pigeon, you're welcome to do that. And for pigeon pose, it will mean that your hands come down to the top of your mat and you'll slide your right leg all the way back and turn your right hip toward the mat, left hip pulling back. Take a few breaths upright and come down. And wherever you decide to be, focus and concentrate on your breath. Releasing any pent up energy that you might be feeling in the hips and the pelvis, feelings of creativity, sexual energy, relationship. Find your breath. Have your gaze in one direction maybe you want to switch to the other direction or go deeper for the last half of, half of the pose maybe moving into pigeon feel free to extend that right leg back and if you can still lean over the bolster Coming 
back to your personal and collective intention, your dedication. The overall idea of acceptance, of santosha, contentment. Accepting things as they are, controlling your reactivity to engaging in a relaxing response, a deep breath. Take six to eight more deep breaths here. breath in and last deep breath out from either of your positions bring your palms underneath your shoulders push yourself up and you're welcome to maybe take a, a downward dog or come into a tabletop stretch one leg at a time out behind you downward dog you lift the hips up pedal out your feet Stretching your legs out behind you, tuck your toes, rock your heel forward and back. Let's come right to the other side. Move on to our seat. This time our right knee will come forward. Your left knee will be behind your right foot. And again, you have those choices of how to lower yourself down into the posture. You don't need to use a bolster or a cushion, but you can if you like. This can be in front of you, so you're going in the same direction as your hips, just leaning forward. If you want to come into the twist and take the bolster or cushion to the outside of your right thigh and twist over to the right. And then adjust the position of your head either to the right or the left, depending how flexible your neck is. And allowing the pelvic bowl, the hip, the whole sacral area to, to sink down into the nuts. We want to get that opening in Svadhisthana, the sacral chakra here. Working to balance our sexual energy, to balance our creativity, our relationships, our connection to others. So much of that imbalance right now. The lower chakra is really challenged by all of this situation that we're in where we're so isolated from others and isolated from maybe the things that we like to do that help us to move that energy out, especially our creativity. I know offering these classes through this online format, it's strange, but it's at least giving me that chance to be creative and, and keep working with the practice. So thanks for the opportunity to share. And let yourself lower down, whichever position you've taken. Again, if you want to move to pigeon, maybe I'll give you the signal about halfway through or any time you like. Slide your left leg back behind you. Take your left knee as far back as you can. You can stay upright or lower down. Remember to stay attuned to your breath your intention. You do anything in this practice, the most important thing is to continue breathing. That equanimous breath, meaning inhales and exhales evenly, but also continuous. Throughout the practice, there's a level sense of breath throughout. Sometimes I find that breath gets stuck in certain parts of the body, and if that's happening for you, maybe place your hand there or your attention there and try to breathe into that space a little deeper to help it open up. Just about halfway 
pelvic glutes. If you want to switch your position, maybe you come into a twist or you extend your left leg back for that pigeon, feel free to go there. with your hands underneath your shoulders. Again, you can move back maybe to a tabletop and extend your legs one inch time back behind you or a downward facing dog or any other thing that feels good. Take a few more breaths wherever you are and we'll meet on our seat. So take your time to get there. So next we'll be working with Manapura Chakra, the solar plexus. This is considered to be our, our power center. We were working with that yesterday in the Hatha Prakta. And it really is uh, effective to balance out the solar plexus by twisting. Strengthening for sure, but twisting. So we'll come in to a supine twist. My gigantic bolster is, is a bit much, but if you like, you can place a cushion or bolster between your inner thighs. Make your way down onto your back. Open up your arms in a cactus shape. Jog your hips a little bit to the left, uh, to the right side. We'll start with our knees to the left. And place a hand on your thigh. Turn your gaze over to the right. Feel free to extend this into any deeper variation that you like for a twist. Close your eyes and breathe. And this is about balancing energy, your activity levels, your autonomy, your self-esteem, connecting with your self-worth, your self-efficacy. It's really often thought of as our own personal power center, Manipura, the solar plexus. It also helps to balance the pancreas, so in terms of the endocrine system, so that helps with our it really affects our energy, our, whether or not our blood sugar levels are regulated. And you know when you're feeling kind of hangry or stressed out because you haven't eaten and then you eat just something with a little sweet or sugar and suddenly you feel better. So we're balancing that out right here. The energy from the food that we get, so important. So as you're breathing here in the 
massaging gently all of the internal organs as you inhale everything expands and as you exhale contracts in and then twist at the same time you think of wringing out a sponge it's sort of the effect of these twists so breathe deeply here let the whole breath expand all the way into your right arm as you breathe all the way to the top of your chest and shoulders Breathe out, try to squeeze everything tight, bring out every last wrong tension. your last six to eight deep breaths here and consider that sigh that release of the mouth or even the Brahmari breath that mm sound from the O, the humming sound on your lips as they're closed. Last deep breath. Last deep breath in, and your last deep breath out. Bring your gaze back to center. Put your put your hands down on the mat to support you to bring your legs back to center. And here, a nice counter pose is up and up, and then bringing your knees into your chest, giving yourself a little squeeze or a rock. Or if you'd like, be Purita Karani, legs up and arms up. The nice rotations of the ankles and the wrists. If you have something that you can hug over top of your shin bone, I really should get a proper bolster, but this is pretty nice. You can hug that bolster around your shins or cushion it on your shins, walk side to side. Maybe even play with the idea of getting your feet underneath your bolster or cushion. <laughs> and extending your legs straight up to the ceiling. And this little bit of extra pressure helps relax the sacrum down. It feels really nice. A little bit challenging too. Whatever you are, take five more deep breaths. Using these postures in between the in poses to recalibrate, realign. Coming back to this idea of acceptance, the central shaft. Accepting at how you are, as you are, 
who you are in any given moment. opposite side of the twist so realign your hips on your mat bring your block or for your cushion in between your knees or your bolster hips a little bit to the left side twist your knees to the right open up your arms either pat the shape or anything that feels good for you right hand can come on top of the left thigh it might feel different on this side depending how your lower back is turn and look over your left shoulder if you like remembering to stay connected to that breath so your inhale breath that full elongation of the spine so feel everything up feel it all the way into your left shoulder and then as you exhale see if you can squeeze it all out like you're releasing tension and tightness from a sponge and staying connected back into the Manipura Chakra, the solar plexus, and how you can balance out all of that energy flow, your activity levels, your autonomy, your self-esteem, your self-worth. Coming back to your breath, let it lengthen and deepen through this posture. Come back to your intentions and your dedication. Keep your mind focused. six to eight deep breaths here everyone. And bringing your attention into the solar plexus, Manipura Chakra, release any last bits of holding or tension there, bring it out. And come back to your personal power and control over any given situation comes from this place. Last couple of breaths. Use the 
sigh out your mouth. And slowly you'll start to bring your head back to center. Bring your palms down on the mat so you can shift your hips back to center with support. Feel free to stay here for a moment. You can release any bolster if you like. If you want to hug your knees into your chest again with or without the bolster, you can. Or a gentle cushion in my case. Let your sacrum level out, stay here, or maybe let your shin bones float parallel to the floor, 90 degree angle at your knee joint. Or place the bolster or cushion if you have back up on your feet. Let it extend up to the sky. This may need to be a little wider apart than the hips. Maybe arms are extended as well. A little variation here of the Urita Kalani. up on your feet, bend your knees, bring it down, make your way onto your back again and have one of your blocks or your bolsters handy. We'll be in a supported bridge pose in just a moment. Our next posture will be for Anahata, the heart chakra, and we'll start with a floating bridge. So feet underneath your knees, arms beside your body, make sure you can tickle your heels, so very close together, just, you know, a couple a couple of fists distance between your feet isn't very wide. Arms down along, so your feet should be tucked in inside your fingertips. Lift your chest up a little, squeeze your shoulder blades together. Take an inhale breath as you lift your hips up off the mat. Also lift your arms up and see if you can float your hands to the mat behind you. Exhale, lower down, hips and arms lower at the same time. Do this a few more times, maybe four more times each. Hips lift, arms lift. So activating the pelvic region and the belly, but now starting to lift up into the chest. Heart chakra. For any back bend, it's also really good to think of a back bend as a heart opener. And a few more times. And when you're ready. Your arms will stay down, but you'll lift your hips up and slide a block or cushion or anything you have underneath your seat. Lift your hips up a little higher. Now your heart is starting to press up. What's beautiful about this posture, when your head is below your heart, the blood from your heart doesn't have to work so hard to get to your head. So it's a nice release for the heart and also to reoxygenate the mind. So breathe here. Let the hips surrender down onto the block. Getting this initial opening into the heart. Our heart chakra is also connected to our thymus gland. And our thymus gland is responsible for our immunity. And it's really interesting, you might have heard me say this before, that our thymus gland gets smaller as we get older. So we have less internal support for our immune system. We have to bring in external sources, like our how we take care of ourselves, and how we take care of our body. So in this time in particular, I think anything that can stimulate the thymus gland to help protect our immune system is most important. So any heart opening posture, any kind of back bend is really key right now. So also our heart is how we connect to others. We have an electromagnetic field that comes from our heart that can go out very wide. But when we're not in personal contact with people, how do we make that love connection, that heart connection? Is it possible through these viral, uh, these virtual means? 
viral memes, no, hopefully not, through these virtual means of connecting through computers, through screens. I don't know, but I know that every time you show up and I show up together, we can still make that heart connection. I hope you're feeling it too. If you've dedicated this practice out to somebody, I know I asked for you to dedicate some energy out for my friend Stella and also for my dad, maybe to someone else, to all these heroes in our communities. Let it flow now. This is when your heart is open and that energy can rise and be released. I always like that saying, let your love light shine. So this is it, let your love light shine. listen to this beautiful music you know we always have this music from these two djs soul rising and dj taz rashid and this is one of Ta uh, taz's songs it's ananda which means bliss so bliss out for a few more minutes here take you through the practice um, until about 15 minutes before the end and I will lead you through yoga nidra and then you can take your shavasana as long as you like. Maybe you're smart and you're already in your pajamas <laughs> and fall asleep. And I hope you can join me Sunday night at 7.15. We'll have another yin practice. And in between that little yin sandwich will have power yoga tomorrow morning you can earn earn that chocolate and that easter dinner if you have one myself i celebrate passover so we'll be having our passover dinner tomorrow night matzo ball soup my favorite food i hope wherever you are you're able to celebrate any holidays that you celebrate whatever they are special occasions in some way that you still feel that connection your heart connection to your families and your loved ones Five more deep breaths here. Breathe, sigh out the mouth as you exhale. Last three breaths, inhale. Now you're welcome to stay exactly as you are with that block underneath your sacrum or we will move into an inversion and turn a little bit to the side Viparita Karani. So from here all you do is bring your knees into your chest, give yourself a little squeeze and then release your legs and arms up to the ceiling. So that same reverse waterfall pose you just did. You're welcome to stay. You can rotate your ankles and wrists a few times. If you want to go one step further here, you could lift the hips up and come into a snail pose, which in regular yoga class we call plow pose. So whichever one of these postures you're in, the chin is in toward the chest slightly. So this is stimulating the Shuddha chakra, the throat chakra. And I think right now there's such a a challenge for ourselves to express so many things because we're often alone. Who are we communicating with? How are we communicating? But also we take in so much. How are we processing that and how is it coming back out? How are we expressing what it is that we're taking in? So soften your throat. Let the thyroid glands be stimulated here. This is responsible for our metabolism, our levels of energy. 
And I don't know about you, but I find myself right now with everything that's coming in, I find it quite exhausting actually. And just talking about the same difficult subjects all the time, this whole throat area is getting overstimulated and I feel very tired. So this is a way to rebalance. If you're in cloud, uh, cloud pose or snail pose, we call it in yin, you stay here. Maybe the arms come uh, out behind you. You can interlace your hands. Or you even want to come up to a shoulder stand if that feels good for the last couple of minutes of the posture. Wherever you are, focusing on the throat chakra or your shoulder chakra, snail pose or right up into shoulder stand even. A traditional yin practice, but you can hold it for 10 to 20 breaths. Or you can just be Karika Karani. You can even take the block out if it's too much and just focus on chin in. Take your last six to eight deep breaths here in whichever inversion you've chosen. ready to come down out of your inversion. If you have a block underneath your sacrum, you can remove that block as you before you come down. And maybe hug your knees into your chest a little bit. Walk side to side. Or just stay in stillness. Maybe it might feel good just to come right down onto the back. Knees are bent. Palms beside you. A little mini Shavasana. Like not quite there yet. And wherever you are, make your way onto your belly. So I'm going to turn around so I'm facing forward, but you just stay in the same orientation, whichever direction your head is facing, let it face that way. Make your way down onto your belly. If you have two blocks, you can use your two blocks. Even if you have two cushions, you can use cushions. If you don't have anything, you'll just lay on your belly and make a pillow with your hands under your forehead. Otherwise, take your two blocks just to the tops of your shoulders, forehead down. This pose is called Advasana. It's the reverse of Shavasana. And this is to help balance Ajna Chakra, the third eye. So make sure your forehead is touching something. It could be a cushion or the mat. It could be your, your hands. This will be our last posture before we set ourselves up for yoga nidra. So let the shoulders relax down. A little bit of a heart melting at the same time. It's that same kind of position if you've ever gone for a massage. Sometimes they put those cushions under you. Our third eye, Ajna Chakra, are responsible for our intuition and imagination. Visualizing the dreams, our insight, our vision inner vision and it's also stimulating the pituitary gland and the hypothalamus so the pituitary gland is our master gland it helps to regulate all of the glands it's a tiny little seed really behind the third eye the size of a pea that somehow regulates all of our glands all of our endocrine system to make sure everything's running smoothly and when we're young, it, it stimulates our growth. 
And when we think about our growth as adults, how do we continue to grow? We don't get taller. Maybe we get shorter, but we don't get taller. Maybe we get wider. But our inner growth, how does that happen? What do we bring into our lives? And it's through our insight, our intuition, of our inner listening, I think that inspires us to grow. So let your third eye be connected. Keep your two eyes closed, your third eye open. Last deep breath in. And last deep breath out. Take a few breaths here. Maybe you'll push yourself back as you're ready into a child pose, Balasana. We'll make our way into a setup for yoga nidra and shavasana. So I'll give you a couple of moments to get down onto your back again. It would be really nice if you have a blanket to cover yourself. You can put a cushion, a gigantic couch pillow underneath your thighs, even a pillow behind your head. You can even prop up your hands. It's really nice to practice that the hands relax. You get yourself ready, cover yourself with a blanket, and I will start the yoga nidra. Just about 30 seconds. I'm going to turn down some lights in here. to bring your awareness back to your breath. Breathing to a deeper place. Take a big breath in through your nose. A big sigh out your mouth. You can drop your awareness all the way into your body and let it travel all the way down to your toes all the way back up to the crown of your head like a wave and all the way back down to your toes one more time inhale awareness all the way up to the crown of your head a big ripple up to the top and exhale drop it back down to your toes let your awareness travel to the left side of your body bring your awareness to your left thumb We'll move progressively through the body and every time we stop at a body part, take a breath there and relax and keep going. And if you lose contact with my voice, it's okay, don't worry. Come back when you can or just let yourself go. There's no right or wrongs here. So bringing your awareness to that left thumb. Relax your left thumb. Bring your awareness to your second finger. Relax. Keep going. Third finger. Fourth finger. Fifth finger. 
Relax all of your fingers of your left hand. Relax the palm of your hand. Relax the back of your hand. Relax your wrist, your forearm, your elbow, your upper arm, your shoulder. Take a breath in here. As you exhale, relax your whole left arm from your fingertips to your shoulder. Again, come back to your awareness and let it drop all the way down now to your left foot. Relax your left big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, fifth toe. Relax all of your toes. Take a breath in and a breath out. Relax the top of your foot. Relax the sole of your foot. Relax your heel your ankle, relax your lower leg, relax your knee, relax your upper leg, relax your hip. Take a deep breath in and as you exhale, relax your entire left leg from your toes all the way to your hip. Bring awareness again back to the breath. Take an inhale here. And as you exhale, allow your awareness to travel to the right side of your body. Bring your awareness to your right thumb. Relax your right thumb. Relax your second finger, your third finger, your fourth finger, your fifth finger. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, relax all of your fingers of your right hand. Relax the palm of your hand, relax the back of your hand, relax your wrist, relax your forearm, relax your elbow, relax your upper arm, relax your shoulder. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, relax your whole right arm from your fingertips all the way to your shoulder. Take a breath in, bring your awareness back. And let it drop all the way down. Bring your awareness to your right big toe. Your second toe. Your third toe. Your fourth toe. Your fifth toe. Relax all of the toes on your right foot. Top of your foot, relax the sole of your foot, relax your heel, relax your ankle, relax your lower leg, relax your knee, relax your thigh, relax your hip. Take a deep breath in and as you exhale, relax your whole right leg from your toes to your hip. As you breathe, bring awareness to your limbs, your forelimbs. Feel the heaviness of your forelimbs as if they're made of big sand bags. And feel that depth of connection and grounding down into the earth below you. As if you could sink down slowly, grain by grain of sand. And then start to bring awareness to anything that's touching the mat whole back line of your body, maybe the back of your leg, your hips, lower back, your mid back, your upper back, back of your hands, your arms, maybe your shoulders, back of your neck, the back of your head. Relax the whole back line of your body. From top to bottom, bottom to top. Take a deep breath. Soften the whole back body as you exhale. Bring your awareness to the front of your body. 
Parts of your feet. Parts of your ankles. Front of your legs. Pelvis. Your abdomen. Your chest. Front of your shoulders. And your neck. Feel the whole front of your body soften and relax. Take a breath in here and a full breath out. Bring your awareness to your face, all of the muscles in your face. See if all at once you can take a breath in and expand the awareness to the whole face. As you exhale, let your facial muscles soften between your eyes, your temples, breath into your ears, your cheeks, your nose, your lips, your jaw, all of the muscles in your face soften. Feel the eyes relaxing back into their sockets. Feel the tongue relaxing in the mouth. Take a clean breath in. A sigh out your mouth. Another deep breath in. And sigh out your mouth. Now feel your whole body relax all at once. Feel your whole body relax all at once. Continue here in this state of deep relaxation, transitioning into Shavasana. Thank you for joining me for this practice. Please stay as you are. Sending you beautiful love and light from my heart to yours. Namaste.